In question 21.7, we see a credit entry to the liquidation account forfeited share surplus. Now the question was raised how this surplus was calculated. Before I look at the calculation of the $500, just see where we deal with um, this forfeiture of the shares. You can see it's done after we've processed the journal entries resulting from the liquidation um, or after we've processed the journal entries from the liquidation process but before the deficit to the shareholders are calculated and it's part of the process of transferring um, the reserve balances, the um, equity balances to the liquidation account. Now if there's a forfeiture of shares as part of the liquidation process that reserve account is treated as or viewed as a gain resulting from the liquidation process and um, the effect of it is that it reduces the deficit um, to the shareholders. Now to actually calculate that reserve account you have to think back to the journal entries that we studied when we um, did the journal entries for share issues and the forfeiture of shares. Now let's look at all the information in the question that relates to um, this part of the process, the forfeiture of the shares. We were told that um, in our statement of financial position under share capital that the company had 50,000 ordinary shares issued for $2 a share but called to $1.50. So there's a further 50 cents um, that can be called. There's calls and arrears, 1,000 ordinary shares at 50 cents each. Then um, under the realization of the assets, we are told that the unpaid calls are expected um, to realize um, to an amount of $250. So only half of it um, will, be, will realize and the balance are therefore treated as unrecoverable. And this is the clue that we will have um, a forfeiture of shares. the sentence here. We are also further told that any uncalled capital um, proved to be recoverable. So using this information let's run through the initial journal entries. So initially when the calls were made the entry would have been um, I'm sorry call account 50,000 shares at 50 cents each being the difference between the two dollars and the one dollar fifty to which it has been paid um, giving us an amount of twenty five thousand dollars so it's debit our call credit our share capital So when the money was received for this call, we didn't receive the full 50,000 um, shares. Um, we received only for 49,000 shares because we were told that for 1,000 ordinary shares there were calls in arrears. So 49,000 um, at 50 cents gives 24,500. We then had an entry to calls in arrears of 500 and we credit the call account with 25. So basically cancelling um, that account out then. Now during the liquidation process we were told that of the, these thousand um, shares only half of it can be realized. So during the liquidation process we'll see a debit entry to cash 
but it's recorded in the liquidator's statement of payments and receipts. Um, it's now only half of the calls in arrears, so it's 500 shares at 50 cents. And we credit our calls in arrears. 250. So you can clearly see at this stage we still sit with a balance of $250 in the calls in arrears account. So when we forfeiture the, or record the forfeiture of the shares, we then cancel those shares um, from the share capital account. So it will be debit share capital. It's 500 shares and currently these, um, it's the 500 shares that were forfeited and in the share capital account they lie at a value of $1.50 each because remember that was the amount that it was paid up to before that call was made. So it gives us an amount of 750 We credit the calls in arrears account with the 250 um, balance that was still lying in that account. So the, this account will now have a balance of zero and the rest of it goes to the forfeited share reserve which is the five hundred dollars which the question was how to calculate the five hundred and then as part of the liquidation process when all the reserve balances are closed up to the liquidation account we'll see that there will be a debit to the forfeited share reserve of five hundred and the credit goes to the liquidation account 500 effectively reducing the deficit from the liquidation process